another thing I forgot to mention is the cut of the carrots. I messed up. I meant to do them lengthwise with a potato pillar to get nice thin strips of potato, but I I cut them into cubes. Well, as they say on the internet, it always gets a little janky. The onions will probably go translucent before the carrots are fully cooked through, but I want to try to throw in the noodles before the onions are fully cooked to make sure there's still a little bit of bite. Now I've seen online where some of the toppings for this would be pickled ginger or kimchi, maybe some of the rice seasoning. Uh, what's it called again? But again, we're just gonna go basic with this. If in the future I get these noodles again, maybe you can add different sauce, change it up, maybe make a teriyaki pan, add in a little bit of chicken, make this a little heartier, and not necessarily healthier. I apologize for any unsightly noises. That is the wind. There is a storm coming in. And there's nothing I can do about that. Alright, so these onions look like they're starting to turn translucent a little bit. I'm going to throw the noodles in so they can get a little bit of heat. Just take it right out of the package. Not too close because this cellophane will shrivel up. Since I'm worried about losing the amount of water I just put in here, I'm going to lit it. This way, we lose the least amount of moisture possible and we get those noodles hydrated. Give them a little flip. They're already starting to soak up that water. That's great. Lit it again. Oh wait. I just saw that side's not flipped over the right way. There you go. Now, I've done this once before, but I didn't add vegetables and I probably added way too much liquid, which was my problem the first time using these recipes and in general. I may have read the back and then ignored it. See, if I would have done little strips of carrots, it would have been able to, like this, or you see these little strips of onions. Or you probably can't, because I've got a really terrible camera. But there's some onions, so when you grab noodles, the onions will be with it. But the carrots, they're just, they're just gonna be sitting there like a, uh, like a lazy cousin. Oh, don't matter. Time to add the powder. Whoop. If you've never smelled this yakisoba powder, it's a mixture of soy sauce and A1 steak sauce. Now that's the smell coming out of the package. The flavor, well, that's a little different. Welcome back. Uh, the battery died. I, just things that happen. Okay. Oh, that's nice and steamy. Don't do that. Don't do that. I forget. Water. Bad. I need a pot holder. Technical difficulties. On my spoons here. Just kind of ladled in a little bit. We don't want to take up too much space because most of it's going to be noodle anyhow. In a lot of animes, uh, especially where it's younger or single people living on their own, I, I they always are showing off a yakisoba that's left over in the fridge and they're like, looks like we have nothing left to eat. So we're going to try a nice, um, oh that is probably too much. Who, who knows? I've never really had one of these 
is that that was a good amount of noodles in the first place. Let's, let's do that one. This one's going to be the one we'll wrap up. Oh, and there's quite a le lot left here. You could probably get away with making four yakisoba pan. I've tried this before with the Maruchan microwave yakisoba. And that one you have to let sit for a good two or three minutes to let the noodles absorb all the liquid. Otherwise, you'll just be soaking up these buns. Let's take a bite out of this. Take a bite out of the, the side we messed up here. The noodle doesn't fall out like I thought it might have. Everything sticks together very well. It's very savory. In fact, the bun itself is sweeter than the noodles. Oh, there we go. Some finally fell out. You can see it right there. Anyhow, this is actually a lot tastier than I thought it was going to be. And uh, we'll, we'll see how the other one tastes nice and cold in the morning. So instead of letting it sit over just one night, I decided to do two nights. Now, usually when this is the last thing left over in a fridge anyhow, there's nothing else, so it, you never know how long it's actually been there. Uh, I've, I've yet to see an anime where he says, oh, that's been sitting there all week. Normally they just say, it's gone bad. I know this hasn't gone bad, but it has been in the fridge for um, over 24 hours, say almost two nights now. And it actually looks kind of fake. Hmm. I don't know why it's not auto-focusing. Well, let's take a bite of it cold. Not warming this baby up. It's really dry. A lot drier than I thought it would be. The flavor, though... There is a lot of flavor there. I think it has more flavor because it's been sitting around. You know, I'm, I'm gonna. It tastes better than when I first made it. I might have to do that again in the future. That's pretty good. Huh. On to the next experiment. The final stylizing we're going to try with this yakisoba is just cooking it up without anything on the inside like we did for the yakisoba pan. But this time we're just going to lay it on some fried eggs, which I've already cooked. So I've got my required water here, yakisoba, powder, the noodles, a little off camera here. Fried eggs, as you can see. But I'll also be adding a little bit of Do San Food Kimchi. I'm gonna turn on that heat. Recipe calls for a tablespoon of oil. Usually I underestimate when I guess liquids, which is a good thing because this stuff is very strong. We're gonna do something a little different this time also. I'm going to add the yakisoba sauce straight into the water. What I'm hoping is the last few times that I made this, the yakisoba powder stuck to different parts of the noodles. Now, while I didn't really taste the difference, this time there's not a lot of additives, so I'd rather have that flavor distributed well throughout the noodles. And I understand also that I should have used warm water to completely melt all the sugars that are in here. You live and learn. Hopefully. If you don't, well, I'm sorry. That mixes up pretty well. It's 
it was room temperature water, this is definitely ready. It's gonna be fine. It'll be all right. Twirl up that sauce and get it in. We'll have a nice sizzle sound when this hits the pan, I bet. Wasn't very loud, still very nice. Just keep stirring it. Make sure it doesn't burn or stick to the bottom. Like uh, that first trial went. But also, we're gonna try to have that noodle absorb as much liquid as possible. I'll keep coming at you with different recipes, different kind of food, different stuff. Uh, some of it may be local, some of it may be from around the world. And uh, local for me, let's just say Texas. So right away you know that yakisoba is, is not a local food. And for my next review, a Russian 24 hour military ration. I'll be, that'll be my next video. I want to do a mix of food review, food cooking, food experimentation. I hope that uh, it goes well. If not, well, at least I'll have a personal record of foods I've eaten and uh, hopefully most of them will be good. If I could read the relic though, that would make understanding that ration a lot easier. So it looks like most of the liquid is already being absorbed. I'm going to go ahead and just turn the heat off. Since it's electric coils, a lot of that heat stays. So you can still burn, still cook, and make sure you get to the point you want to get without adding more heat. So let's go ahead and bring this plate over here. Still a little warm from those eggs. I'm going to plop this over. Yeah, come on, get out of there. Well, we'll use some tongs this time around to be a little bit more classy. Just plop that on the side here. Two widely different flavor profiles. You have the spicy, crunchy kimchi cabbage on the one hand. Then the slightly, slightly sweet. This is this yakisoba stuff isn't very sweet if you're thinking of teriyaki and stuff like that that that's sweet this yakisoba sauce slash powder it had a little bit of sugar in it not a lot it just just enough that you can distinguish that it's not salty or that it's not sour or it's not any one of those other five flavors so that was pretty much it with my kimchi but i'm going to save that sauce for some instant ramen It'll flavor it very well. And there we have it. Some kimchi yakisoba on a bed of fried eggs.